you get your views from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe we all watched in horror 911 the planes hit the towers and the towers came down did you ever wonder how they fell so fast? Well, maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask. Don't you think it's strange? There were no fighter jets. Okay, well, hey, I didn't get the credits right on the beginning of this show. This is season four, episode 14, and this is June 25th. So don't believe the front of this show. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, yeah, we could always use more volunteers down here. We're trying to get the word out. Now, 9-11 was an inside job. You'd think that we'd just be talking about 9-11, but what it boils down to is the people that did 9-11 are still in power. And, it, you know, that I'm not talking about a low position like the President of the United States. I'm talking about power. Okay, so you need to check out Endgame. It's a four-year-old movie. It turns out it was right on. Anyway, uh, before we go much farther, I just want to say hi to Dale, one of my friends watching. And there are some new people that might be watching today because I met them in a restaurant. People say, what can one person do? Well, I wear this shirt to restaurants, for instance. And, uh, that starts conversations. So the more people that watch this, you know, it turns out that things are only, uh, you know, as good as you can make them. Uh, we really do have the power once we have public opinion on our side. The people that are doing this have, you know, tiny, tiny numbers, and they only exist because they spread the money around and corruption is everywhere. Well, we don't have a lot of time today, as usual, so today we're going to show a couple of clips from Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now, I'm not going along with, I'm not showing this for any religious purpose, and I'll have to say right now, Minister Farrakhan gets his analysis right, but he keeps going. I mean, he stops where it's, you know, the Jews did it. Well, that's pretty simplistic. The powers that be don't care about religion. I'm not saying they're atheists. They don't care about atheists either. The point is, they use the religion, which is a natural set of divisions, boundaries, and they play that against you. They play each of us against each other. So Mr. Louis Farrakhan, although brilliant, just kind of has, he's, he's tied up in the religious end of things, and so that's where his analysis stops. But uh, it would be like saying that America is the number one terrorist nation because it's Christian. No, that's stupid. We're the number one terrorist nation because our government is taken over by thugs. And it has nothing to do with Christianity, even though they play it as if it's Christianity versus Islam. It isn't. It's all of us against the greedy people that are just soaking up wealth and power as much as they can. Well, this will be a short little clip here about 45 seconds just to get us started so enjoy this and I'll come right back we voted for our brother Barack beautiful human being with a sweet heart and now he's an assassin they've turned him into them you didn't hear me They turned. They brought him to England. See? Oh, now he can stay in Buckingham Palace. Nobody stayed there. Just a few presidents. Why him? Why? See, we know this enemy. Oh, boy. 
Say okay, the, uh, <laughs> we know this enemy. They turned Obama. Well, what, what it is, why did they take him to Buckingham Palace? Because they want to put a black face on the white agenda of this Im Anglo imperial, American Anglo imperial takeover attempt, whatever you want to call it. So he's saying they changed our brother. Well, they turned him into an assassin. It, it gets more interesting. If we're ready to go on, hit it when you're ready. For humanitarian reasons. We're going to stop Gaddafi from killing his own people. And we believe that. You've been deceived. You talk about a, a man killing his own people when you lie to the American people saying that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction when you lie and then take innocent young men who come to serve their country and send them to die in Iraq, in Afghanistan over lies that's a murderer in the White House who will say it? I will because I have a power behind me that is bringing America to judgment as we speak. Don't be afraid. I'm talking. I have to pay a price for what I'm saying. You bomb other people's cities. You destroy their towns. Hey. Okay. He's a murderer. Who will say it? I will say it. So will everybody else that wants to tell the truth. But it's not just Barack Obama. It's every president we've had for as long as you can remember. And way beyond our memory, too, just back into history. The point is that the presidency is a tool of the corporate elite and they use it to take over anything they want to take over. And then they feed you this nonsense so that you fight amongst yourself over religion. You fight amongst yourself over Democrat versus Republican. You fight amongst yourself over anything except what is right. How long is it going to take you to understand that our government is causing the problems in the world? We're not reacting to problems. We are causing those problems. And 9-11 was a proof of it. If our government will do that to us, we don't care what we do to anybody else. Do you understand that? Minister Louis Farrakhan understands that. How come you don't? Okay, we're going to play the next cut. Now, Louis Farrakhan has a message that he's sending to all the nations of Africa and the United Nations. And it's a long one. It's over an hour long. I've only got a short little 23-minute clip here. We're going to play that. Pay attention. It's a coalition to be out in front of the White House. I'd like to, uh, first of all, uh, thank Minister Louis Farrakhan. He pulled this together. He's been talking about it. It's been on his mind to make a statement uh, about what is happening in Libya. And those who saw his first press conference, the minister gave us permission. We know that at the UN right now, there's a delegation from the African Union. And many of them who wanted to attend told us that they had to be there for this particular meeting this morning. And the minister has given us permission to deliver the DVD from this press conference to all of the African states as well as the Caribbean and those that are in NATO. So without further ado, let's bring on Minister Louis Farrakhan. of Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give him praise and thanks for his goodness and his mercy to the human family. That whenever any member of this family strays from his straight path and earns his displeasure, before he punishes, he always raises from among the people a prophet or a messenger to whom he gives what is called divine revelation by means of which that people can be guided back to his favor 
and uh, we thank him for these prophets and messengers of God Moses and the Torah Jesus and the gospel Muhammad and the Quran I am a student of the honorable Elijah Muhammad and I could never thank Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad the great Mahdi who came among us and raised from among us the Honorable Elijah Muhammad particularly to reform black people in America and to raise black people in America black people throughout the world and to warn America and the world of what is happening now and will continue to get worse. I am here this morning um, and I am happy to see the press but it's irrelevant to me if you print one word or no words I'm here to make a statement and when I finish if you wish to ask me questions you're welcome. I'm here to discuss the current state of affairs in Libya and the actions taken by the United Nations with respect to Security Council Resolution 1973 passed on the 17th of March 2011. I'm addressing my remarks to the United Nations and all those who have joined to destroy Brother Leader Colonel Muammar Gaddafi and the Libyan Jamahiriya. What is the justification for such an action that was taken by the Security Council of the United Nations. If the Security Council passed Resolution 1973 to protect the civilian population of Libya from the so-called evil intentions of the leader of Libya, why then is NATO, under the auspices of the Security Council, forgetting about humanitarian concerns and now using resolution 1973 as a pretext to assassinate Muammar Gaddafi and create regime change. Why is the UN fostering uh, through NATO armed rebellion to create civil war knowing that in a civil war the humanitarian concerns go out the window. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said, Gaddafi's days are numbered. We are working to plan for the inevitable, a post-Gaddafi Libya. Russia says, Gaddafi has lost the moral right to lead Libya after attacking his own people. The actions of NATO along with the United States, Canada, Qatar, and members of the Arab League, engaging in this errant behavior are creating conditions that will ultimately bring about the destruction of the United Nations and all those engaged in this action. Blinded by arrogance and the sense of power of these nations that they can do what they will, they cannot fathom the consequences of their actions. They think they are on a good course in which all of the vultures will benefit, but in the end all of you will see that you have signed on to that which will ultimately bring about your utter destruction. What has Muammar Gaddafi done to deserve what this united coalition of demons is putting on him? They say that he has lost the moral right because he has killed his own people. But you have never proved that charge. Check the record of America, England, France, Canada, Qatar, Italy, the Arab League, and put it up against the record of Muammar Gaddafi and the Libyan Jamahiriya. England, France, Italy, Germany, and the United States do not have a good humanitarian record. America with the transatlantic slave trade and 450 years of evil toward the blacks, the decimation of the Indian population and the dropping of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That record is clear. 
England and all of your empire. You have never had humanitarian concerns for the people of Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, and other places that you ruled. So are you better now than what you once were? I suggest not. What are the real strategic interests that compel you to this behavior? Libya under Muammar Gaddafi pushed the British and the Americans out of Libya, closed their bases, and nationalized its oil. That angered Western powers, even as Mohammed Mossadegh of Iran angered the West when he nationalized Iranian oil. That action led to a CIA operation that planted the Shah on the throne as the ruler of Iran. Under his rule, the people of Iran lost much of their Islamic identity, giving birth to Imam Ayatollah Khomeini and the Iranian Islamic Revolution. Whatever you, England, France, Italy, Germany, and America, whenever you planted leaders, they were always those who put their personal wealth and gain over the best interests of their people. Thus, whenever you installed a dictator, whether it is in the Caribbean, Central America, South America, Asia, Africa, or the Middle East, you always knew that the legitimate interests of the people would cause some of the people to rise against that dictator. So your dictator had to use methods of repression, torture, and destruction of life to preserve your dictator and to preserve your economic and strategic interests in that country. Have you changed? Are you better than your predecessors? I think not. So when a man like Muammar Gaddafi rises in a bloodless coup and replaces the former king, who was a friend of those who were sucking the blood of Libya and nationalizes oil, we must ask the question, who did his actions help and who did his actions hurt? It hurt those who were the first time, for the first time had to pay a fair price for Libyan sweet crude, the sweetest high quality oil in the world, which meant that the people of Libya could, from the sale of their oil, better their quality of life. How did Muammar Gaddafi use the riches of Libya? He loves to put a tent in the desert, so you cannot say he used all money as some of your other friends just to build huge palaces, nor can you say no matter how much wealth he has that he does not consider the Libyan population. Were you displeased? with his use of Libyan oil money to take down dictators that England, France, America, Italy, and Germany put in place. Yes, you were angry with him. So he became number one on the list of the West to be destroyed. You say he did the Lockerbie bombing, the bombing of a discotheque in Berlin. Well, none of us who are sane and civilized can cotton to any kind of action that destroys the lives of Libyan people or innocent people. Does that compare in any way, however, with America, England, France, Germany, Italy, with your record of mass murder against regimes that you didn't like? Let's look at President Sukarno in Indonesia. He was a man who called all African and Asian nations and nations of color together in the Bandung Conference of 1955 to discuss the wickedness of the West against the poorer and weaker nations of the earth. How many hundreds and thousands of lives were lost when Sukarno was overthrown in a CIA-sponsored coup? Estimates range from between 250,000 to 500,000 deaths. Have you changed? Or are you the same as you were, but dressed in different garments? Assassination plots against Fidel Castro, Patrice Lumumba, Papa Doc Duvalier of Haiti, 
Are you a new and better France, a new and better England, a new and better Germany, a new and better Italy, and a new and better America, that you could sentence another man to death with your history written in the blood of black, brown, red, yellow, and the blood of your own Caucasian people? This is why the Bible calls you the bloodshedder. Have you changed? You have shed the blood of all life without just cause. Are you the protector of the humanitarian rights of the Libyan people with a record? Have you changed? Are you better than you were? Let us see. If Muammar Gaddafi has lost his moral right to lead the Libyan people, let us see what is going on in your countries and ask you the same question. What is your humanitarian record with your own citizens? You great imperial powers. Europe's unemployment right now is at, 12, is at a 12 year high. Unemployment in France is near 10%. Italy and England are near 8% and Britain has lost close to a million youth out of work. Spain has 21% uh, unemployment, that's five million jobless. And what about crime? Britain's violent crime record is worse than any other country in the European Union. The UN itself found that the crime rate in England is worse than in America, and both make the crime rate in Libya look almost non-existent. <laughs> Libya ranks 61 in the world in their incarceration rate. Russia is number two. The United States of America is number one. Can you lecture Muammar Gaddafi and call him a madman? No, shut up and listen. I'm not here for applause. Excuse me. It's disturbing. I'm asking a question. Can you lecture? Muammar Gaddafi and call him a madman? When if the leader of a country is mad, would not that be reflected in the citizens of that country? In the crime of rape, Sweden, Britain, Belgium, Norway, Israel, Denmark, Spain, France, Russia, Canada, Japan, and Germany all lead Libya. If Libya has, if he has lost the moral right to lead his people, what about you? What about homelessness? The rate in Britain is nearing 8%. In France, they estimate that 200,000 people live on the streets. In America, there are nearly a million living under bridges, homeless. We save America for last because America started all this. You are the one that called for such action. And you maneuvered this resolution 1973 through the Security Council and fought for it and were the proudest when it passed. You are the one that called for Gaddafi to step down and leave his country, and you are the first to say that he has lost the moral right to lead Libya, and you are the first to call for his assassination. Well, America, you are hemorrhaging jobs. Nearly eight million jobs were lost in this latest recession. America now has 15 million unemployed, and when you add to that the underemployed, it comes to nearly 20 million Americans. 44 million Americans now live below the poverty level, and that is rising. A full one-third of American families tasted poverty for at least a couple of months last year. That's 100 million Americans. And the number of households collecting emergency food aid is now nearing six million. Approximately one in eight, million, uh, eight American people are, are using food stamps. Three million U.S. properties went into foreclosure in 2010 alone, a record high. And the number of families in homeless shelters or forced to live with extended family or friends is nearing one million. 
50 million Americans have no health insurance, and that's 17% of the total U.S. population. 68 adults in America die each day in the U.S. due to the lack of health insurance. And what about your veterans, America? Those whom you send to fight your unjust wars. How do they fare when they return home? The Pentagon says that one in five American soldiers are returning from the war zones with some form of traumatic brain injury. Still others suffer emotional trauma. About 130,000 veterans become homeless each year in the United States, and more than half are black and Hispanic. The Veterans Administration estimates that 107,000 veterans are homeless on any given night. Suicide rates, divorce, and drug dependency are alarmingly high and worsening among America's veterans. Your infrastructure is even worse off than your citizens. A full one quarter of the nation's bridges are structurally dangerous. Seven billion gallons of clean water leak out of your crumbling pipes every day, while billions of gallons of raw sewage pours into your lakes and rivers. According to your engineers, it will take $2.2 trillion to fix this problem. Your record, America, stinks in the nostrils of God. You who, in the name of humanitarian efforts, want to save the population of Libya, Save them from whom and from what? How many Libyans are living in poverty? What's the crime rate in Libyan society in comparison to you who condemn Muammar Gaddafi? How many homes has he built for his people? How many of his people are living under bridges? No Libyan lives in poverty, not one. The crime rate in Libyan society is nothing in comparison to those of you who condemn him and his rule of Libya. He has built hundreds of thousands and into the millions of homes for his people. No Libyan is homeless. No Libyan is living under a bridge. Why are you angry with him? What has he done to bring down on him the wrath of the West? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to me, the three most hated of men are one, a rich man who gives away his wealth to the poor, a wise man who shares his knowledge with the ignorant, and the man to whom the Holy Quran is revealed. Why do you hate Gaddafi? Does he share the wealth of Libya with the poor? Well, if he does, and he does, doesn't that make you, America, look bad? <laughs> You are the richest nation on the earth, and you've got 44 million people living in poverty, bread lines, food lines, food stamps, children suffering in America, but you want to talk to Gaddafi about humanitarian concerns? Gaddafi believes that economic democracy can only be achieved when the GDP of a country benefits all its citizens and when the country's wealth is dispersed to every single citizen. One journalist who lived in Libya wrote of the accomplishments Libya has made under the leadership of Muammar Gaddafi. This uh, journalist is Brother Gerald A. Pereira from uh, Guyana. Listen to what he says and see if you can defeat the truth of what he has said. Number one, Gaddafi nationalized Libya's vast oil resources and used his influence within OPEC to negotiate fairer prices for oil producing countries. Two, Gaddafi used the oil revenue to build schools, hospitals, universities, and infrastructure. Three, he raised the literacy rate from 20% when he became the leader, and now it is 83%. Libya has one of the finest healthcare systems in the third world. All people have access to doctors, hospitals, clinics, and medicines free of charge. If a Libyan needs surgery that is unavailable in Libya, funding is provided for that surgery to be carried out overseas. He raised the life expectancy from 44 years now to 75. Basic food items were subsidized and electricity was made available throughout the country. 
he spent billions on the man-made river where he brought his engineers, brought water up out of the desert. And now pipelines run from Benghazi and Tobruk almost to the door of Tunisia. This man has set up irrigation projects which were established in order to support a drive toward agricultural development and food self-sufficiency. Any Libyan who wanted to become a farmer was and still is given free use of land, a house, farm equipment, livestock, and seed. Gaddafi vowed that his own parents who lived in a tent in the desert would not be housed until every Libyan was housed. He fulfilled that promise. Under Gaddafi, Libya has now attained the highest standard of living in Africa. Listen to this. Money from Libya's oil revenue is deposited into the bank account of every Libyan. Women have full access to education, employment, and he has enabled women to serve in the armed forces. This is most important. Gaddafi was the first and only leader in the Arab world to formally apologize for the Arab role in the trade in captured Africans. Gaddafi acknowledged that the black Africans were the true owners of Libya and proclaimed in his green book, the black race shall prevail throughout the world. Pereira writes, imperialists fear a united Africa which would completely alter the balance of power globally. The well-documented fact is that if Africa stopped the flow of all resources and raw materials to the Western nations for just one week, the United States and Europe would grind to a halt. Nelson Mandela, the one whom you claim you love, called Muammar Gaddafi one of the 20th century's greatest freedom fighters and insisted the eventual collapse of the apartheid system owed much to Gaddafi and Libyan support. Okay, I can tell you right now, what type of health insurance do you want? I want Libyan health insurance. How about you? I mean, how about the idea of national resources, the profits from those or the money from that being deposited in your bank account? We've got coal in this company, country. We've got uranium. We've got, well, I don't know if we have uranium. I know whatever whatever resources we have. How about let's nationalize them instead of selling them to the corporations for a dollar an acre or whatever. There's been a travesty in Montana in you know selling mines, our national resources, and the people get absolutely no benefit from that. It's time to speak out. Our country is. B.S. I was just going to break the rules about cable access and cuss on the air. But the point is, you know, for, for years we're told that our country is the best thing. But do we get any evidence of that? We're, we've got the highest incarceration rate in the world. People who believe in peace don't have that. Libya has us beat by a long ways. Well, I've got a lot... A lot of things to say, you know, it's, it's time for people to stand up and say, what do you want? Quit defending the United States. Do you know of any other country that has military bases all over the world? God, and then you, then you just blindly sit there. There's no such thing as an American empire. Are you absolutely out of your ever loving mind? Empire is the name of this game. Stop defending empire and start working against it. It's amazing. This empire is costing every human being on this planet, except for the rich controllers, everything we own, including our lives. Well, I'm going to play a little, one more cut from Minister Louis Farrakhan, and then we're going to open up the phone lines. Get ready for a good one. Gaddafi said, this is not Egypt. This is not Tunisia. This is not Bahrain. This is not that because he has looked out for the needs, rights, and interests of the Libyan people. That does not mean to say that there's no dissatisfaction in Libya and whether that dissatisfaction is legitimate or not. 
But if there is dissatisfaction, then let the Libyan people come together and sort out their problems as intelligent, civilized people should do. But it is your intervention. The American people want the same. They're angry with their government. So let me ask this question. Since you said Gaddafi is an illegitimate leader, what is the polling of the American leadership toward their leadership? What is the polling of the American people toward Congress, toward the Supreme Court, toward the executive branch and its leader, the President of the United States? 50% of Americans disapprove of Obama's job performance. Does this mean now that he is illegitimate? Is this why many Americans are saying that he will be a one-term president? 39% of the American people disapp the way the Supreme Court is handling its job. 70% of the American people disapprove of Congress. And 61% of the American people believe the country is on the wrong track. But according to what we understand, only 2% of the Libyan people are in rebellion against their government. Now, you mean to tell me that half of your people don't want you? And you dare to say that this man is illegitimate? What makes him illegitimate and what makes you legitimate? Is it because you have ruled the world under white supremacy? Is it because you are former power as a colonial master and a slave master? Is it because of your military might? Well, let me tell you what's about to happen to all of you. I didn't come here just to have a press conference. I came here to preach the doom of this institution. You say he's illegitimate? He kills his own people? What's your record? What's your record, America? Why are American soldiers dying in Iraq in Afghanistan, because the former president lied and said that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, that he was an enemy, that he was going to be a threat to the security of America, that he may be connected to Al Qaeda. So you sent these soldiers to die on the basis of a lie and then washed your hands of responsibility for killing them. How many so-called Libyans can you prove that Gaddafi killed? And how many Americans do we have on the record that your lives has caused their death and the wounding of hundreds of thousands that may never again regain their correct mental state? But you're not the first to do that. American presidents have been lying all along, killing your own people for acquisition of other people's territories, wealth and oil. Tell me that I don't have the record of America's wickedness, see? Zbigniew Brzezinski estimates that in the 20th century, no less than 167 million lives were deliberately extinguished in politically motivated carnage. And you have uh, humanitarian concerns uh, in the front of your mind? Now let me talk to you. Okay. Now remember that Al-Qaeda is a group of uh, thugs that are on our payroll. They do what we say, and we sent them in to create this so-called rebellion in Libya. Now, once you understand that we're doing it, it's not the Libyan people that are uprising. It's the Al Qaeda in you know uh, foreigners pretending to be some sort of Libyan sympathizers. So, with that in mind, why do you suppose they're doing that? It's because Libya is an example that they do not want you to know about. What if you demanded the same thing of your country? What if you demanded that your country treat your citizens the same way? Why they couldn't have that? Now there's another person on a completely different continent that's doing the same type of thing for his people, and that's Hugo Chavez. And you notice how they're trying to demonize him too? They do not want you to know what a government can do for its people when it's not trying to be corrupt, when it's not controlled by the bankers. Now, our bankers desperately want this control to continue. They're strip mining every last bit of wealth that they can find, that the quantitative easing one, quantitative easing two, quantitative easing three and four maybe, 
What does that mean? All that means is we don't quite have it all. We need a little more time. So study about Hugo Chavez. Study about what Muammar Gaddafi is really doing in the Middle East. Now, we, I've got a phone caller, but just before we go to that, I want to say one more thing, and that is I've taken a look at the, you know, the coverage that my YouTube postings get of this show. All over the world, most of the, most of the countries in Africa, most of the countries in South America watch my show, at least one or two viewers. I've got to be modest there. But the point is, there's one striking bear country that doesn't ever watch my show. Libya. Now, I wonder what that's all about. You know, there's at least one person somewhere on the planet in every country that's going to watch my show. I, I mean, that's just the way it seems to be. But Libya seems to have a blackout. Are they, have they turned off the Libyan internet? They're w one of the most modern countries in the world. They, they have internet just like us. And you just heard the description of their life. Uh, not one single person living under a bridge in Libya. Don't you wish your government would do that for you? I mean, this is amazing. It can happen. It do, the, the American model of government doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be for the rich, of the rich, and only for the rich, and the rest of you go to hell. So think about it. Is this the government you want? Or is there something else that exists on this planet right now that's much, much better? Think about it. Okay, let's take that first caller now that I've got my adrenaline flowing. I need a little more volume in here. I don't hear him at all. Hello. Oh, there we go. Okay, hi. Yeah, I just finally heard you. How okay. Well, well, you're the first call of the day. They just got the equipment tuned. Okay, Bill. Well, I'm so I'm I'm very glad that I've gotten through. This is the first time I've called. Oh, good. Your show, but I've watched it for quite a while, oh, and thanks. you always hit the nail right on the head. Your 9/11 um, research and information that you impart is right on the money. People don't want to face reality, and I thank God that there's finally somebody, and I dare say white, that is standing up and telling the truth about the history of this country, how it's been exploitative of the entire planet, and to everyone's expense for supposed entitlement. Yeah. And I am our mentality of entitlement at the expense of everyone, irregardless, and now depopulation, because if you can't have it in the final end, because God's on his way, <laughs> but the fact that this is going to be rectified, and I appreciate that Minister Farrakhan is telling the truth. He has put his life at risk to do that. Uh, people want to disclaim what he's saying, but the reality is what it is, and white folks need to face it. Hey, did you see the one where he, he was talking about President Obama warning him about going into Libya? And he said, who the hell do you think you are? Man, that's, that's the way we should be talking to the president when he does that. Uh, oh. Well, he is right on the money, and he's telling the truth. Uh, he, uh, as a commencement uh, <laughs> keynote speaker at the Howard University mm -hmm. commencement this year, he was so right on, and I was so glad to see him telling those young folks the reality of education, how far it really will take them, and what availability there is as far as careers in the field that they've chosen and got their degrees the in now, and all the money they're going to owe, but are the jobs there for these young folks to get. Right. The young people are really going to suffer, everybody's suffering, except those that are hiding their money offshore <laughs> and yeah. have done all kinds of insane stuff, and uh, the insanity of it is not just the fact that uh, if I can't have it, I will go ahead and take everybody out. But my last-ditch effort is to depopulate, to <laughs> depopulate or the radiation that is here that we will not face. And that's the reason there's more breast cancer and everything else is last generation or the generation prior to myself, which would be persons in their 70s and 80s, have had a full length of time of life to now have to, for us to be able to see the end effect, we should be able to connect the dots. And you have been very helpful in trying to wake people up. White folks, wake up. You can't do this bullshit anymore. It's <laughs> over, and God's on his way. And unfortunately, the mess is not going to stop until God gets there. We're getting warnings of every type. As far as the weather is concerned and everything else that the people say, well, it never happened here before. How could this happen? We don't have the type of climate that would permit these tornadoes and hurricanes and this and that. Well, and it's every day, and it's picking up speed. It's becoming profuse. 
people better stop and pay attention. But I don't want to wait for God to do it. I want us to, to well, get our common don't sense seem going. To be, people don't be able to seem to stop themselves <laughs> because they are insane and they want money and they figure if I can't have it, I'll take everybody else out. Yeah, if I bio genetically bioengineer the food, if I do whatever, <laughs> it's God, frightening. You don't know what to eat, drink, or whatever let alone all the madness that the, pol the politicians do. Obama better do what is told for him to do or he'll be assassinated. It's real simple. He's trying <laughs> to do the right thing. He has the right mentality. He said the right thing. He had the right platform. Everything he said made very good sense to any damn fool. You know he, what he was saying made sense, and it should be carried through. But the racism in this country is greater than to the good of humanity. Right on. Well, thanks for calling, and I got more callers waiting. Thank you. Please, I hope white folks keep listen to this and accept the reality. Oh yeah, it, we, you know we need more and more people to, to speak out, just like you did. Well, it's the truth, and it's sad to say. Hopefully, it's not too late. Hey, you noticed the media blackout about the uh, Farrakhan speech at Howard? I mean, uh, I saw it. I actually saw it on cable. Uh, on cable, okay. It was in two parts. Did ABC, wonderful. NBC, or any of those people talk of about it? Of course not. Only <laughs> Portland Cable has the. They're letting audacity. us down. The people know about, you know, America's got talent. They know about, can you dance? So you think you can dance. They know about all that stuff. All they, the they know the best football score. Yes, the lowest uh, common denominator. Uh, right. The lowest common exactly. denominator. And people are lapping it up because they want to be de uh, d diffused. They want to be dummied down because they're saying, well, for God's sake, we'll set, hopefully everybody will be dumbed down. We'll still come you know, out on the if top. If we were being graded on truth. If we were being graded on current events, America would be given an F, and everybody else in the world oh, would yeah. be given A's. They oh. all know what's going on. Absolutely. Americans are the only ones that don't understand the oppression that we're putting on the rest of the world. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We want to, we're in denial because <laughs> it would be an inconvenient piece to face that reality and to no longer be in the catbird seat and to have to be inconvenienced. <laughs> but the to point what? is that none of us people have ever been in the catbird seat. It was all a lie in the first place. Yeah, but look, look, but reality, you know, you knock on the door of opportunity, it flies open if you're white. You knock on the door of oh, opportunity yeah, well, and you're black, it's a whole different trip. There is the, uh, the American dream versus the American nightmare. That is real as well. And, you know, I mean, maybe that's going a little there's bit There's a bigger deep, commonality, that's the though. bottom line. It's, it's an economic thing. The top half Absolutely. of one quarter of one percent But there's a difference everything. between being exploited... And, and being um, abused in a different manner. There's exploitation if you are black. You're being exploited. You're being, uh, it's an oppor uh, opportunistic piece. If oh, a white make, person, it's a whole different thing. Make really no isn't. mistake about it, the whites are being just as exploited by that same racism because they're being tricked into thinking that somebody else is inferior, so you're superior. And that is a form of racism that is just as unacceptable. Well, that's it in a nutshell. You know, that's the bottom line. And we need to, and white folks need to stop teaching their children that mess. You know, it's almost like, uh, what was the name of that movie, The Lost Boys or something like that, mm. where children grow up without any aid of per parents or adults. Mm. And uh, it's ironic, if the children, if one generation was left alone without any of the prejudice, bullshit, and the biases, the world might come to, to a point of peace because that's a natural state. Well, governments cause wars. The people don't seem to be in, in too much interested in No, it's in about wars. money. It's about money, <laughs> yeah. but they're going to show, find out very shortly that money means nothing. You'll have to take a barrel of dollar bills to get a loaf of bread very <laughs> shortly. Yeah. People need to wake up. We are broke. And with that, we'll go to the next caller. Thanks. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Hello, caller. Hello, Bill. Thanks for your passion. <laughs> everything to stabilize the financial sector and nothing for everything else. Uh, Marcy Kaptur uh, spoke for five minutes to the House. She's a representative from Toledo, Ohio, on the heartlessness of rugged individualism. She excoriated uh, the House for denying 350,000 persons food help for, with the SNAP, Supplementary Nutrition. Oh, yeah, food stamps. Uh, while ignoring uh, Greenspan and Wall Street totally. Um, resistance and peace are part of our nature, just as antibodies are part of our bodies. Uh, I think it was Gandhi who said that everyone has a wild card. It only, uh, the only re only requirement is uh, spiritual discipline. Hey, why don't you tell us the reference to what you're reading, and then we can all read it later. Well, uh, just say what you have to say and don't read it. Come on, put your heart in it. 
Marcy Kaptur can, can be heard on portland.indymedia.org. Um, that's most what I wanted to emphasize. Also, Robert Jensen spoke about um, the American dream and how instead of being the epic hero, we are becoming the tragic hero. That he spoke about the anguish of the American dream. I recommend it to people. Um, by the way, this is the future of, of news. People want to hear this type of stuff. They don't want to hear that crap that the Channel 2, 6, and 8 are putting out. They want to hear real people news that really matters to people, right? And so you're, you're not saying, uh, you're not repeating Obama, Obama's challenge to out-hustle the world. Obama, he's, Obama. He, he's, he, he's unfortunately <laughs> often, uh, he's listened to that other half of Harvard, you know, the Kissinger half. Oh, yeah, well, you know, the people keep, like, like Louis Farrakhan was talking about, oh, they turned him, they turned him. No, he was already that way. He was already good buddies with Kissinger from the beginning, and he surrounded himself with Wall Street. Now, don't tell me he was ever good. He lied to us from the beginning. Anyway, sorry. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's a uh, rhetorician. He's, he's a great speaker, you know, just like Kitzhaber is a great speaker. He, he can talk about the how, how we mustn't hold to the old ropes you know, the old ropes of economic theory, but, but he doesn't uh, act out. He doesn't create community centers. We could have a world of community centers and free Internet books. Well, Libya and Venezuela are perfect examples of what you can do for the people if you are trying to do something for the people. This yeah. country is a perfect example of what doesn't happen you know, because of monetary interests. We don't, I mean, imagine that we're having this problem because of bankers, and so the solution is to have poor people give up things like food? Come on! We're the richest country in the world, and we tolerate this type of shit from our leaders? The, the, the horse is economic recovery. Once, <laughs> once, uh, once you create jobs and dry up the tax havens, the deficit will gradually fade away. That's Robert Kuttner's perspective from the American prospect. Well, I think that, you know, we have a much better chance to create jobs once we get rid of corruption and the, you know, oh, the big money stuff. Hey, what, anyway, oh. thanks a lot. We got one more call okay, and we only got you. six minutes left. We're going to move on. Hello? Hello, caller. All right. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, I got you. Okay, one time I was just turning my uh, volume down. Yeah, Bill, I'm a big fan of your show, you and uh, Alex, and uh, Outside the Box. I really, really enjoy both of you guys' programs. It's uh, been very, very enlightening, but I just wanted to kind of quick, since we got a short time, I won't take too long. Uh, I've never called before, but I watch you guys all the time. And Go for it. Uh, you had hit that, that subject right on the head right in the beginning, and kind of that first caller kind of moved it off to the side. Uh, I wanted to kind of enlighten that first caller, maybe help everybody wake up and as you said, you guys are saying the same thing. It's not just black and white and religion and this and that. It's a way to divide and conquer all of us. And the one thing that is kind of, I keep watching them show after show after show, if they do not, if people do not wake up, they don't, I don't think they realize that once they're finished with the rest of the agenda of all these standout regimes that are supposedly anti-American and, <laughs> you know, just want to hurt us all, we're next. We're last on the list. Yeah, that's Once when we that started happened, actually standing up. What do you think the FEMA camps were built for? They say they were, or what, some sort of center for you to get together during crises. Right. With your hands behind your back, chained to the floor. Right. That's a really good way to get your family together. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, that's just the way it's going to end up. It's going to end up going down. If people that can sit there and watch the news and believe what they want not believe and fight amongst each other for race, religion, politics, social, economics, it doesn't matter. Once they are done with the rest of these, the rest of these countries in the world, and they got their military bases, it's going to come just crashing down on top of our heads, and that's where people really, really need to wake up. Because by that point, it's going to be too late. These are examples of what's going on in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Egypt. <laughs> hear me? I mean, the rest of the world. You know, Once I had somebody. The rest of it, it's going to happen to us. I, I was just going to say, I had somebody uh, write me on on the. You know, one of my postings on YouTube, they, they gave a comment, and it was, you know, hurry up, get your next show posted. Why do I have to wait two weeks for the next show? You know, I'm thinking, well, yeah, I'd love to do it, you know, weekly, daily, whatever, but uh, you kind of need a staff to put something like that together. I could use a, 
a, a historian researcher, a, a current events researcher, a copywriter, a headline writer, uh, somebody to post everything to the internet, somebody to arrange guests, somebody to be PR, somebody to arrange you know sponsors and so on. Hey, all of a sudden we've got a whole group of people working together and nobody can get paid from this because we it's all cable access, so it has to be volunteer. So what are you guys oh. sitting on your asses for out there? Come on down oh. and volunteer. Well, I had one quick question for you. I okay. don't have inter I don't have internet access, but I've been waiting for quite some time. I'm trying to do it. Um, I'm I'm kind of a poor person myself. I work day to day, week to week, do whatever I can, but I do have time, and I don't even know where PCM TV is. I mean, I, I work mm -hmm. so much just to make ends meet, but you know, I, well, by my spare time, I read and research. Go to the internet, PCMTV.org. I, I do not have internet access oh. whatsoever. All right. Well. Then, I'm one of the last in the world. Uh, 2766 Northeast MLK. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, I'll try to get a chance to stop by. Thanks a lot. Cool. All right. Anyway, uh, next caller. We got another caller. Hello? I don't hear anything. Well, anyway. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, no calls? Okay. Well, yeah. Now... The, the thing is, we keep trying to work within so-called political boundaries, Democrats and Republicans and stuff. Well, I'll tell you right now, I'm never going to vote for a Democrat or a Republican again. And I don't care, you know, that Ron Wyden might have been a good guy or something like that. They keep working for the same foreign policy. Everybody does. I mean, the group of them, they work lockstep. And, you know, I, for one, will not tolerate that anymore If as, for as powerful as my single vote is. And next caller, go ahead. We have a minute and 44 seconds. Hey, just, uh, I was going to tell you about a, uh, an organization called SafeCast.org. It's actually not an organization, but it's a volunteer uh, group. And you can go to SafeCast.org, S-A-F-E dot O-R-G. I heard this information about a month ago on KBU. And anybody with their own radiological monitor, Geiger counter, or one of the more new sophisticated types can... Uh, put in hourly or daily or weekly uh, monitorings wherever they live in the world. And uh, to go along with your last statement, I just heard because I haven't been able to watch the show because I'm out in TVC, TV country, oh, and they have uh, got uh, their whole system discombobulated. But, um, matter of fact, this guy, your show is supposed to replay on the can uh, Tuesday morning the 28th at uh, 4.30 a.m. But anyway, Alex Ansari about two, three years ago had George Green on there who was a repeatedly taught insider and he was at a meeting of the Trilateral Commission back about circa 1975, and he asked, who are we going to put in for uh, president next year? And the, the leader of the group said, oh, we're going to put in this guy by the name of Jimmy Carter. He's a Democrat yeah. from Georgia. And he says, what? You're going to put in a Democrat? And the guy says, oh, don't worry. We own both parties. Yeah, so yeah exactly. So you're right on with what you're saying, man. You got it. Hey, and so then, by the way, all... watch the show coming up. It's uh, Mike Schultz's Odyssey, and he ta he's going to talk about the uh, – Bilderbergers, and he has a really nice uh, graph that shows the relationship of these different organizations, CFR, etc. We're out of time. We've got to go. we got 10 seconds, and the next show is July 9. So see you then.